Anyway guys and welcome to top channel 101 and today we're going to be making this sneaker bar commercial or animation using blender as you can see there's a lot to unpack here we have some fluid simulation high viscous fluid simulation uh yes yeah, so let's jump in if you want to follow along the project files are going to be on my gumroad patreon and youtube membership all links are in the description as you can see we start off with uh, this bar here and then we have particles that get merged on two uh that bar and then we have this uh chocolate pour and uh, then we have uh, the fluid simulation. So I'm going to first create the bar, kill this on the x-axis like this, go into edit mode, run off the corners like that using control B, you can see my shortcuts here, and now uh, we have something like this. So the first thing I want to do is instance some particles onto this. So let's go to geometry nodes and uh, start doing that. I don't like how this is subdivided because we're going to be instancing particles and I want those particles to deform the mesh a bit. If you look closely where we have particles, we have some bit of displacement and uh, that displacement also, you can see, is animated per particle. So we want a nice distribution of vertices like that to have that good displacement. So to do that, I'm just first going to convert this to a volume and then convert that into a mesh. That will give us this the original bar, but uh, with better subdivisions. And if you want more subdivisions, we can increase or decrease the voxel amount. I can do a shade smooth like that. Let's instance some particles. First of all, I'm going to just branch off here and uh, use a distribute points on faces so we can have some points like that. For these nuts, I used a rock mesh. So let me go in here and just grab a rock mesh like this. The polygon count is too much. So I'm going to decimate that using a decimate modifier. Add something simple like that. And I can scale this down like that. Go back to my instance here. Drag the rock in here and just use a uh, instance on points node to instance our new rock as the nuts. So if we preview this, we get our nuts. But, uh, we want some random scale and uh, a random rotation. So, so I connect this. If we join the two here, you can see what we have. Let me just increase the density of our particles a bit like that and maybe scale these down even further. Yeah, so we have something like that. Now uh, let me give this a material just so it's easy to see. And I need to set that material, so set material here, call this bar like that and give it a reddish material. So this is what we have, as you can see. Now I want to have that displacement. So to do that, let me make some room here. Uh, I want to have a set position here. And uh, if you bring in a normal input and uh, add it into the offset, you can see you can push the faces of this bar out. And uh, if you use the vector math uh, with the scale option, you can control uh, the scale of the bar like that. But uh, we can use the position of each of these instances, scale them the displacement. So to, to do that, I'm just going to come here after the distribution and use proximity, metric proximity. The target should be points and uh, use that as, as that. And you can already see that uh, we have a displacement on every instance of the particle. But uh, the problem is, is that uh, this is kind of flipped. So I can use a ramp and uh, flip this around control how this looks. Now, another thing I had in the final animation, you can see these particles are just attracted onto the bar. I can come in here on the points themselves before we even connect them to the geometry proximity. I can add a reroute node here and use a set position. I can see I can control the position and I, you see that their position also influences the displacement on the bar. Instead of using this value, I can also use the normal from the distribution to just push them out like that. But uh, I can animate this using a vector math and change this to scale. And I uh, can see now I can control these movements. I want the animation to be transitional. So they're going to create a mask that runs from left to right like that. And uh, the easiest way to do that is using uh, the proximity node as well. So I'm going to come to our original mesh here. If you use a, a merge by distance node, you can merge the closest vertices together. And if you increase the distance by a lot, you can see we, we go from this rounded corner to a sharp corner because we're merging vertices. And then if you merge it even further, you get to a plane and then finally to a single vertex like that. And the great thing about this is that it's going to be in the middle of everything, which is nice. 
uh, because now we can convert this into a curve just like this and uh, we can use a trim a trim curve on this curve and uh, that will give us the control over our animation now if you tried using this in the proximity node with a uh, geometry proximity and uh, just preview the instances I mean turn off the wireframe and the distance we have here you can see we get an error because this is still a curve so we need to convert this to a mesh curve to mesh and uh, use points you can see we, we we get something so to get a proper mask instead of using a line like this uh, we can try using a tube or cylinder so we can turn this into a cylinder from a plane uh, by using a, a circle curve connect that and you can see what we have yeah so after you turn this into a cylinder it's, it's going to generate a better mask than just using a mesh line so this is our mesh line this is our cylinder so if you look at our points and uh, we look at our proximity node you can see we starting to see something and uh, if i play with the end mask here you can see it's animated the reason why we don't have any data around here is if we look at our mesh here you can see we only have vertices here and vertices here so we don't really get a good mask if we don't have enough polygons so i'm going to come here uh, before the trim and uh, just subdivide this using a resample curve so that our curve has more vertices and uh, that will hence produce a better mask than before so if i preview our instance our points here you can see that uh, the more resolution i add to our curve the better our mask looks i just have to use a color ramp to add a little bit more contrast like that so i can control that quite easily like that we need to use this mask to scale our particles uh, i can get another math node let me just borrow, borrow this and uh, just scale these like that and uh, we we need to flip this mask so i will use a uh, map range flip that around so now we can control the scale and i can expose that property so that i can do that right here the next thing we can do is attract them so to do that i can come here we can come to the particle system uh, so we have our normal option here so that we can use to push these away you can also still use the same mask we have generated as our scale mask for that so let me just make some room here so then we can use this as the scale here and uh, now you can see that we basically get uh, the same transition uh, except we might want to flip this around and maybe just yeah and that's how you do that you can also use the same math to add some rotation so if i use another vector math for the and add it to the rotation you can see we get some rotation but if we use this mask here i'll just add a reroute node connect that you can see a slight rotation that you can amplify by just using a math node around here and multiply it by something like two let's try a really high value yeah you can see how they rotate into position uh, and now we can join this back to the original mesh so we can see what's going on perfect so that was the first part then the next part is to work on the on this here we're going to start with a mesh just like this and uh, i'm going to add a subdivision surface and i uh, just turn this basically model the shape or the profile of my spiel something like that we don't need that many poly counts we can just reduce that you can add an array and uh, this is going to be the length of uh, the spill and i'm just going to scale this down yeah something like that so let's jump into geometry nodes add a subdivision so that this is not jagged like that i'm going to use subdivide surface like that so that everything is smooth we can add a subdivision level two you see we have some separation uh, that i don't want so let me just make sure they are close and then merge by distance i think i should do this before I uh, add a subdivision so this is merged like that and i can now convert this to a curve we can use a mesh to curve just like that and now if we use a trim we can trim this quite easily if you convert this back to a mesh we can extrude this on the 
on the x using a combine z yep like that you can bring that in here you just you can add a solidify modifier just give this some nice thickness and uh, add a subdivision surface on top of that it's going to make this a bit more thicker and since we are already here i can give this uh, a nice material add some subsurface okay so this is what we have we can animate this quite nicely but we still don't have uh, the spill effect if i go back to the original you can you can see it has that spill effect now to do that all we have to do is create uh, another line that is vertical yeah maybe something like that instance it at the end of this curve so our curve uh, want around here we want to instance this line we have just created at the end of the curve and you see that uh, that helps uh, create that illusion so before we turn this back to mesh what we can do is use a set position for this line and uh, what we want to do is move it along this curve to do that we just need to sample sample curve and uh, the curve we want to sample is this curve here and what we want to get we want to get the position and uh, we want to use that position as the offset uh, for this so so now if i scrub the vector you can see i'm moving this curve along that path now i just have to turn this back to our curve and uh, you can see now if i change this you can see how it's following the path but uh, now i have two values i have to animate which kind of makes it hard so what i can do since these values all max out at a value of one and the minimum is zero i can just merge them using a value input or just expose them to the same factor now if i control this factor you can see i still get the same thing so i like that these are still two separate meshes so i can merge by distance uh, this has to be turned to a mesh yeah, so I want it to be merged, yeah, just like that. Now, if we connect this as the new curve, we get something like that. And uh, you can turn on these other modifiers. I think that's nice. Okay, then the next thing is the fluid simulation. Okay, so to make the fluid simulation, all you have to do is just add a domain, make it something like this, go to the physics tab fluids domain and uh, this is going to be a liquid we don't need any border collisions as those usually increase your computation time and uh, now we also need a fluid object so i'm going to add a plane like this just scale it on the x and uh, just make sure it's inside the domain and i'm going to animate it if i play back nothing happens i need to give this a fluid type flow uh, flow type liquid and uh, uh, the flow behavior inflow if i hit play uh, nothing seems to happen so i need to go to flare type and turn it into uh, a planner source so you can see what we have okay so we have that but uh, the fluid is not highly viscous as we want so i'm going to go to domain under viscosity turn on viscosity and just increase the strength to something like 0.1 if i hit play you can see it's uh, it's a, a bit viscous let's try two i can see now it's becoming really viscous but uh, the effect to sell the effect a bit more we want this to go in waves like that so i'm going to come in here tap into edit mode and i'm going to add keyframes onto this i'm just going to select one and just just start adding waves just make waves so that this goes back and forth uh, like that now i also want the particles to collide with this so i'm going to come in here give this a uh, fluid effect uh, collision and uh, hit play again now i'm going to go back to my domain and I go to the physics turn on meshing i'll change the upper resolution to something like three and uh, smooth positive and negative to three and also increase the subdivision to 64 hit play so we can see the fluid and you can see it's already viscous uh we can come back to the fluid emitter and just give it an initial z velocity so negative two so that the fluid is ejected more the viscosity or how viscous your fluid is going to be will depend on 
uh, the viscosity strength. So if you use something like three, uh, let's, let's try 0 0.05. Yeah, so all you have to do now is just trick uh, the different settings you're using uh, the animation. I added an extra layer of particles using the hair system, the, but the material here I'm using, I'm just using this uh, serial texture, applying it on there and also give it to the, to the nuts and uh, playing with the cameras. The last thing I could talk about was, is this cover. I modded this, it's a simple mesh that is extruded and pushed in like that. And uh, all I added was these, these shape keys. So the default is this, and then I opened this up by basically just, uh, let me, just selecting one side and uh, just rotating it by pivot point uh, like that. And uh, that gave me uh, that keyframe and uh, then all I did was just animate it open and give it a, a rotation animation and then we have the sneaker coming in. So one problem you might run into is at the end of the simulation uh, this domain turns back into a cube so what I did is parent everything that I wanted to disappear at the end of the animation onto and empty and uh, animated this obstructing the view and scaled everything down like that so you don't see it if you want to check out the project files links are going to be in the description if you want to watch more tutorials on how to make things like this check out my previous videos thank you i'll see you in the next video